going on YouTube? You already know who it is. Back at another video for you guys today. So, uh, I was requested to check out this video. It's called Horror Movie Hidden Gems on Netflix. You need to watch. So, this is from the Netflix Film Club. Okay. Um, but, yeah, that's what a lot of movies. You can't just watch them just for entertainment all the time. You know, a lot of movies have symbolism and hidden messages, hidden gems, all of that. So we're going to go ahead and check out some hidden gems in horror movies on Netflix. Shall we? In about a three, two, one. Like your favorite slasher film, the horror genre can be unrelenting when it comes to variety. Figuring out what scary movie to watch can sometimes feel like navigating a haunted house. So here's a collection of overlooked horror gems and spooky flicks to make your TV go bump in the night. What in the hell? 2017 could certainly be seen as the start of a new Stephen King renaissance, and flying under the radar of this phenomenon was Gerald's Game a Netflix original adaptation of King's 1992 novel of the same title. So why did it take 25 years for Gerald's game to make it to the screen? Damn. Well, the story presents an interesting challenge in adaptation, one that makes the film all the more impressive. Without giving too much away, the story mostly takes place in one room, where a woman is handcuffed to a bed beside her dead husband. Okay. It's time to wake up, honey. <laughs> As a yeah, series of visions up. confront her with her inner demons, the tension ratchets up to an almost unbearable degree. It's all driven by a powerhouse performance from Carla Gugino, with director Mike Flanagan demonstrating such a skillful hand that he was placed at the helm of Dr. Sleep soon after. Before Stephen King adaptations became his stock in trade, Gerald's Game and Dr. Sleep director Mike Flanagan made Hush. This 2016 Blumhouse oh, production doesn't feature any ghosts or otherworldly demons. It's just a lean, tense slice of home invasion thriller, with the added twist of placing the viewer into the point of view of the protagonist who can neither hear nor speak. The result is a sharp, fresh little movie that feels as innovative as it is old-fashioned. The project was a labor of love for Flanagan and his star slash co-writer slash wife, Kate Siegel. The couple developed the screenplay by staging the action in their own home, honing each twist and turn to perfection. That handmade skill shows on the screen, resulting in a movie praised by the likes of Stephen King himself. Cults are great material for a horror film, but there remain precious few masterpieces what in the, the subgenre. The original version of The Wicker, the Wicker Man, Man still towers over cinema history as the definitive movie about a cult, but it finally may have a worthy successor in Apostle. This Netflix original comes to us from the Raid director Gareth Evans, with an impressive cast that includes Dan Stevens, Lucy Boynton, and Michael Sheen. Stay in the shadows! And it be the heathen stun that awaits ye both! Like The Wicker Man, Apostle begins with a man's journey to a secluded island community in search of a missing person. But where The Wicker Man builds up to its shocking conclusion with a series of unnervingly idyllic musical numbers, Apostle descends into nightmarish rituals, horrific torture, and palpable paranoia, all with some incredibly stylish and surreal visuals. Jesus. Unsurprisingly, the Ouija board ah, is a horror movie staple. Filmmakers throughout history have explored the horrific potential that comes with the use of this common toy that promises to connect people to spirits from beyond the veil of death. Rarely, though, has a Ouija board been used as a plot device quite as effectively as in Veronica, a Spanish film that received a warm reception at the Toronto International Film Festival. Directed by Paco Plaza, Veronica is based on a true story, though that claim is made rather liberally. Using as its jumping-off point the factual case of a Madrid girl who died after using a Ouija board, the movie presents a nightmarish descent into paranoia and demon possession that even gained it a reputation in certain corners of oh, social media yeah. as the scariest horror film Ugh. ever. Cam delves into the world of online cam girls, taking the dangers of toxic internet transactions to a surreal and terrifying extreme. Madeline Brewster stars as Alice, aka Lola Lola, a performer obsessed with getting her live streams to the top of the charts. Things get truly bizarre, though, when Alice sees Lola Lola performing live while she's not online. Though Camp takes what? Alice down a neon-drenched rabbit hole of nightmares, the movie has its roots firmly planted in reality. Screenwriter Issa Mize was inspired by her own history as a cam girl, having initially set out to make a documentary before deciding that a horror movie would be a better vehicle for the theme she wanted to explore. The result is a fresh, stylish character piece that raises some hard questions about identity and humanity in the internet age. It's not often that you call uh, the seventh movie in a franchise underappreciated, much less the seventh movie in a slasher series about a killer doll. But 2017's Cult of Chucky is something special, and yeah, Chucky's creator never abandoned Chucky it. Having written every sheep. movie in the series and, and directed the last three, grown. Don Mancini is still firmly in control of the original Chucky brand, one that's been refreshed and reinvented without forgetting its roots. 
Cult of Chucky picks up four years after the events of the previous film, Curse of Chucky. Nika has been committed to a psychiatric hospital after taking the fall for the murder doll's most recent rampage. Just as her doctors have finally convinced her of her own responsibility for the crimes, a retro good guy doll, from Hot Topic no less, turns up at the hospital as a therapy tool. Once the body count begins to climb, Nika has to convince the hospital's residents that Chucky is real before it's too late. She won't be alone. An all-grown-up Andy Barclay yep. and Chucky's old flame Tiffany both race to the hospital for a climax that perfectly sets up Mancini's upcoming Chucky TV series. The when summer of 2017 was pretty packed with high-profile blockbusters, so it's understandable if a quiet little experience like It Comes at Night slipped past you. Fortunately, now you have the perfect chance to see why critics called It Comes at Night one of the most terrifying films in years. With a small but powerful cast that includes Joel Edgerton, Riley Keough, and Carmen Ejogo, It Comes at Night follows in the illustrious footsteps of The Shining when it comes to depicting an isolation-fueled descent into distrust and violence. This moody little story about two families clashing over food and shelter certainly isn't an easy watch, but it just might provide some thrills for a dark night on the couch. If you found yourself moved by the films like The Devil's Backbone. Backbone and Pan's Labyrinth, you'll definitely want to check out Under the Shadow. Just as those Guillermo del Toro movies used the Spanish Civil War as a backdrop for supernatural tales exploring the dangers of childhood, this 2016 Persian-language debut feature from writer-director Babak Anvari takes you to the Iran-Iraq War in 1988 for an extremely personal horror story. Come for the historical drama and supernatural horror. Stay for the exploration of PTSD, childhood trauma, and life during wartime. During the War of the City's airstrikes in Tehran, medical student and activist Shide is left alone with her daughter Dorsa when her husband is called to military duty. A missile hits their apartment building during an air raid but doesn't oh, explode, shit. and that's when Shide, Dorsa, Whoa. and their neighbors begin experiencing disturbing nightmares and eerie visions. There may in fact be a malevolent jinn in their midst, and Shide must decide whether Dorsa is in more danger they from the battle been. outside or the darkness inside. As we all know, isolation can quickly turn into your worst nightmare. Kiersey Clemens takes the lead as Jen in Sweetheart, a terrifying thriller from Blumhouse about a woman forced to fend for herself after getting shipwrecked. It doesn't take long for Jen to realize that something is coming ashore each night. When she begins making increasingly grisly discoveries about what happened to the people who came to the island before her, she's faced with the question of what's more frightening, solitude or the idea that she might not be alone after all. Sweetheart has the heart of an old-fashioned monster movie, but it's got more than one clever trick Is that up a devil secret? As director J.D. Ballard's tightly like. wound tale unfolds, you'll find Not yourself bad. completely uncertain of what's coming next and questioning everything you think you know about Jen and her predicament. The Perfection joins a long, illustrious history of movies about the dizzying yeah, quest for artistic saw. achievement with one soul at stake. Logan it isn't Lawrence. quite like Black like Swan her. or Suspiria, but you might find yourself reminded of any one of those at any given moment. Suspiria. You may well also be reminded of Get Out, as Allison Williams yep. again brings her talents to a character who definitely knows more than she's letting on. Or does she? Describing the plot of The Perfection is not easy to do, as the movie intentionally blurs the lines between reality and hallucination in its twisted tale of manipulation, gaslighting, and revenge. It all begins when Charlotte travels to China, where her former music academy is conducting a new talent search. There she meets Lizzie, the rising star who took her place. The relationship they strike up she takes one bizarre twist look. after another, leading to a string of shocking revelations about just what kind of sinister organization the academy really is. They Filmmaker like Oz Perkins is the descendant of horror royalty. His father, Anthony Perkins, played Norman Bates in Alfred Hitchcock's masterpiece, Psycho. Some of that Hitchcockian sensibility might have been passed down genetically, because oh, the younger God. Perkins' debut feature as writer-director, The Black Coat's Daughter, certainly displays a touch of the master's sense of psychological tension. Released in some markets with the title February, yeah, The Black Coat's Roberts. Daughter is a uniquely structured thriller. It splits its attention among three young women played by American Horror Stories' Emma Roberts, the chilling adventures of Sabrina's Kiernan Shipka, and the politician's Lucy Boynton, all of whom have connections to a Catholic boarding school. The tension may be slow-burning, but the chaotic timeline, rife with flashbacks and non-linear intercutting, will probably make you feel like you need to watch it a second time just to understand exactly what happened. The Black Coat's Daughter comes to us from A24, and if you've enjoyed the distributor's other atmospheric thrillers, you probably owe it to yourself to check Disturbia. out The Black Coat's Daughter at least once. All caught up on the Ooh. Conjuring universe? Looking Ooh. to fill the void while you wait for the next installment? Ooh. You might want to check out The Autopsy of Jane Doe. This spooky supernatural thriller from 2016 was the first English-language film from Norwegian director Andre Overdahl, who saw The Conjuring shortly after completing his cult found footage hit Trollhunter. 
Inspired by the way The Conjuring felt like it was, quote, getting back to basics, Overdahl turned his attention to crafting his own classic-style haunting. Brian Cox and Emile Hurst star as a father-son team of coroners whose ordinary evening is interrupted by the arrival oh, of the corpse God, of an I unidentified woman whose cause of death cannot be determined. Strange occurrences follow, and it quickly becomes clear that this particular Jane Doe has brought something with her, and it won't leave until it gets what it wants. I'm gonna check that out. Thanks for watching. Y'all, I'm quite interested in a lot of jobs, but a, a mortician, I can't do it. Just being in a morgue full of bodies, you know what I'm saying? It's just quietness and just bodies around you. It's just like, nah. Mm -mm. You know, if I had a choice to be that or a hearse driver, I'd rather be. No, never mind, because I don't want to be driving. <laughs> Nothing to do with that. It's too much. It's just, mm, I don't like it. I just don't like the, the feel of it, the look of it, nothing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I could play the mission, like, you know, on GTA 5, when Michael, you know, had to go in a damn morgue and play dead again. If you play GTA 5, you know exactly what the hell I'm talking about. But, um, like I said, you, you find a lot of different messages and, you know, gems in these movies. Like I said, not even just horror, but damn, damn near anything. A lot of stuff that has happened in movies years ago more recent some of that shit is going on right about now you know I, I i could find like a boatload of movies on hulu right now that's about pandemics and all that fucking crazy and it's just it just makes you think like what are they doing what are they trying to do what are they going to do but that's for another video y'all ain't ready Okay, I'll neither am I. But uh, anyway if you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button comment below and matter of fact hold on um, I'm excited for the new Conjuring. I talked about it yesterday, but I am. I I enjoyed the uh, Conjuring series slash sequel thus far. So I can't wait to see what they're gonna do in the Conjuring Three. The devil made me do it. Ooh, now you know with a title like that for the third Conjuring. Yeah, for the third Conjuring, I thought I put up two fingers. Forgive me, y'all. But for that to be called the Conjuring Three. The devil made me do it. You got to come all the way with that shit. My damn voice just cracked. You got to come all the way um, with that movie. It better be some real spooky ass shit. Because like I said, I haven't really seen a scary movie that really scared me in a long time. I mean, obviously I'm older now and, you know, I'm not going to be as frightened by things the way I was when I was a kid, you know, obviously. But, you know, but it's a lot of grown folks to be like, oh, I don't do scary movies. Oh, I don't do scary movies. No, 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 no. Shut up, okay, with your scary ass. I made it through. I made it through. If I can make it through Candyman, three movies of Saw, because I started binge watching Saw movies last year. I might uh, watch the rest of them. It's not that I got, like, scared by it. It's just like, I, um, I was like, okay, I need a break from all this. It's too much going on. I'm going to check the other ones out some other time. But, you know, I mean, I was watching them. It's not, you know, I wasn't scared. Now, back in the day with that big-ass pig and that Aaron and shit, with that wigs, baby, wigs. Shout out to NeNe Leakes, okay? That's when I was frightened, you know what I'm saying? Just the thought of that damn pig coming out, running after you with a fucking chainsaw or something. Nah, I'm good. But, uh, yeah, I can't wait till The Conjuring 3 comes out. The devil made me do it. Not me. Whoever, you know. Whoever that me is, but it ain't me. But anyway, like I said, if you guys want me to check out some more videos, let me know in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button. Follow me on my Instagram. Hit that notification bell so you guys can have a video up and load it. I'll see you guys in a minute. It's Taylor Rain, and I'm out.